Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be checking out the line of eTrailer bearing kits for trailer brakes. When it comes to uh, trailer maintenance, it's a good idea to stay up on your bearings and keep them clean and packed and in good working order, uh, as well as your seals and things like that. And you know, if you're going to be adding brakes to your trailer like we did today, we put these uh, Kodiak disc brakes on. A lot of times those kits won't come with your bearings and seals and whatnot. So it's pretty convenient uh, that uh, a kit was put together to accommodate you there. And you don't have to go through and buy, you know, figure things out one by one. Um, you know, you got everything you need in one big package. So what this is gonna come with is uh, an axle worth of parts, right? So you'll have two of your uh, rear seals, you'll get two of the rear bearings, two front bearings, all of your lug nuts, and then of course your uh, cap here. Now, there's several kits available, and one of the differences is what type of cap. So, uh, you know, if you, if you have quick lube spindles on your axle, so if you have a grease fitting on the end of your axle, or you can put a grease gun in there and uh, grease it, you're going to want this style because this actually pops out and gives you access to that grease fitting. If you don't have that in there, uh, then you can use this, this plain type of cap, uh, that type of kit. Obviously, you don't need to get in there and grease it, so uh, this one will work just fine. But um, a lot of people are probably wondering, you know, this is great and all, but how do I know what kit I need? Because there's several different configurations. You know, every axle doesn't use the same parts. So, you know, we have uh, kits for the light duty axles all the way up to the heavy duty axles uh, and just about everything in between. So there's a few things that you can do to check and figure out what you currently have. Uh, that way you can make sure you get um, what you need the first time. To get that figured out, one of the things you can do is check your axle. So a lot of times there will be a, a tag or something along those lines attached to it, which will give you the weight rating. And generally speaking, I mean, some of them are, are different. You know, you kind of have oddballs out there, but a lot of times uh, they're all pretty standard and that'll at least give you an idea. Um, but to be on the safe side, you can always spend a few minutes, take your existing setup apart and actually check physically check the bearings and seals and whatnot uh, to, to get the part numbers off them. So jack up your trailer, you know, take your wheel off. Uh, your cap, you can beat that off with a rubber mallet. You have a cotter pin, pull that out, uh, remove the nut, washer comes right off, and then the smaller bearing will come out and you pull the whole deal off, and that'll give you access to the back bearing as well as the seal. And a lot of times, uh, you're going to have part numbers on those bearings. That way you can check them and figure out exactly what they are. Just to kind of give you an example of that, here's our new bearing and there's a part number on there. And today we're just showing off the 3,500 pound uh, kit. Uh, you know, but all the, all bearings are going to have this. If not, um, you know, if it's too worn out or you can't read what it says, there are ways that you can measure everything to figure out exactly what you got. Uh, that way you can uh, source the correct kit for your axle. When it comes to the actual seal, feels well made. Uh, these are supposed to be double lipped and what that's going to do is uh, a little bit better job of keeping out you know, moisture and junk from getting inside of the hub and it's going to do a better job of keeping grease in the hub where it belongs. So uh, good stuff there. But other than that, you know, I mean when it comes down to it, uh, it's really about it. It's nice that they made these packages for those different type of, types of axles and applications. Um, you'll get all the stuff that you need, you know, your, your uh, back and front bearing, your cap, lug nuts, seals, and all that. Uh, obviously, you are gonna need some grease to pack the bearings and use the uh, correct type for your partic particular application. So for example, got a boat, get marine grade grease, right? Um, as far as getting these in and everything, if you're unsure how to pack a bearing or drive a seal in, uh, we'll actually do that now. Um, we're installing the disc brakes on this. So uh, we're gonna be using this as an example to uh, show you how to set all this up. 
To actually get your bearings and seals in, uh, it's going to be very, very similar for, for most trailers. Today we're going to be doing it on a hub and rotor assembly, but the same process will be essentially be used whether you have a standard hub, a drum brake hub, whatever the case may be. Um, so whenever you do this, you want to start with the uh, back bearing first, that way you can put that in drive your seal in and be able to slide this onto the spindle and get your front bearing in. With that said, you know, you do want to make sure uh, that the bearing races are in good shape. So these parts are brand new, so nothing really to worry about there. Um, if your race is used and all chewed up and whatnot, you know, not a bad idea to replace them uh, because if these are chewed up, then it's just going to chew the bearing up and you'll be doing this uh, again in no time. So make sure everything's in, in good shape. So you're not just gonna put this in here dry. We actually need to pack this bearing full of grease. So why don't we uh, grab a, gun, grab a uh, grease gun and show you how to pack a bearing. Now we can prepare our hub and rotor assembly. Uh, that way we can get ready to actually put it on our spindle. And so what we wanna do is uh, get a bearing and a seal in the back of it. Now this kit doesn't come with bearings and seals, uh, but today we're going to be installing all new stuff and we're gonna be using the eTrailer.com kit. To pack the bearing, you want to use the appropriate type of grease. So with this being a boat trailer, we're using marine type grease. And actually what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit inside of here first. Just smear some around and there's a light coating kind of get good things going here and then I'm going to uh, pump quite a bit into my hand here and once I have a handful then we can start to pack it into the berry so I get a good amount of grease in your hand and you know there are tools available bearing packers and whatnot um, you know, I'm just showing you the way you can do this with no tools, you know, so you don't have to go out and buy something special. But what you need to do is take your bearing, and if you look at it, where you kind of see the rollers, that little gap there, you want to take grease and push it down. That way that grease will get forced into them rollers and start to come out around the edges there. All right, so if, what you can do Take a big blob of grease and just start to pack it in there. You can push down pretty hard. See, we might be able to get a little bit shown on camera. I don't know if you can see that or not where the rollers are dry and then I'm pushing it. And you get that grease coming through there. And don't be shy with this stuff. You wanna make sure these are properly lubricated so I'm just gonna work my way around get that grease in there really well until it's essentially just spilling out of the uh, the crack there so once we have our bearing uh, completely packed uh, you know we're gonna drop that in like that make sure it sits down in there good and while your hands are all dirty if you want to grab the front bearing and do the same thing to it um, that way we can have that ready and set off to the side whenever uh, the time is right so once that bearings dropped on in there uh, I like to wipe away a lot of the extra grease that came up along on the side there I like to leave a thin layer just to help uh, lubricate the seal when it goes in and same thing with the seal uh, I just wipe a very thin layer around it just to help drive it in and uh, go from there. So with these seals, again, there's tools you can use, driver, seal driver kits and stuff that you can use. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't going to have that type of thing, though. So I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. And honestly, I kind of like this way better, um, especially with a seal like this. You know, that's a pretty nice one, so it, it can handle this a little bit better. But... Um, I like to try to get it started, you know, get it lined up straight. So 
best I can. And then just take a block of wood, all right? Put that on there and take a dead blow hammer. Start to lightly tap. And we're tapping this down one or two taps at a time. Take the block of wood off and just make sure that this is driving in flush. You know what I mean? So this looks pretty good. If say one side's up a little higher, you know, just tap over more of that side. So this one's looking pretty good actually. Examine it. We just wanna hit this down flush with the surface of the hub there. A lot of times you'll have to end up turning it. Turn the board here. Just gonna work it around a few times and it doesn't take a ton of force either. You don't have to, you know, give this your all here when you're tapping this in. But, you know, make sure that the seal doesn't fold over on itself or get pinched up or, or uh, look out of place or anything. Like I said, these ones are pretty, pretty uh, sturdy pieces. So uh, we get this drove down, it stops, it looks really good. And now we can work on the front. I flipped our assembly over and packed the smaller bearing, just like we did the larger one. Uh, you know, same way, this will go in, in this side. We're not gonna put it in just yet, but we wanna have it ready. And then uh, I did put some grease, just like the backside, light coating around our bearing race. And if you don't have quick lube spindles on the end of your spindle, on your axle, if there's a grease fitting, you don't need to really need to worry about putting more grease inside of here. Because once you put everything on, we'll um, fill it full of grease that way. If you don't have that grease fitting there, you can take more grease, put it inside of here. That way everything stays properly lubricated. Uh, but with that said, we can grab all the stuff and get it put on our axle spindle. We'll take this. Again, I put a light coating of grease on the spindle. And we'll just very carefully slide that into place straight as we can. I'll take our front bearing, push that into place. And while we're holding this up here, take our uh, washer. And I like to just put a thin layer of grease and all this stuff. That'll slide on. We can take our nut. I'm gonna run this all the way down by hand until it gets tight. And then just to make sure that this is fully seated on there, what I like to do is take a pair of channel locks. And tighten it down. That way we know this is pushed all the way on there. Then I'll break it loose and I'll back it off and then literally just run it down by hand until it stops. And that'll set on preload. We can take our uh, a retainer here. Put that into position. You gotta line up the little keyways there so you can get the cotter pin back in. Cotter pin. Kind of do the same thing actually uh, to get it in. If it's fighting you a little bit. Run it up through there. And then bend the ends down. So now what we can do, we can lubricate everything with our quick fitting there. Take our grease gun and we're just gonna work grease into it until eventually, it'll take quite a bit since we didn't put really any in. But what we're looking for is just like a rounder washer and everything, just to see grease start to kind of pump out of there. So keep working it in until I see that. And once we see that, we know uh, we're in good shape. Looks like I'm getting a little bit of grease coming out now. 
Just kind of starting to punch out from there so we know we're in good shape. We'll pull that off and then we can get our cap on. For our cap, this will simply just pop on. These are kind of a pain sometimes to get going, to be honest with you. So I put a little bit of lubricant around the edge there, hold it in place, take a dead blow hammer. I try to get it started. I said sometimes they're kind of tough to get going, so just take your time with it. Once I have it somewhat going, I'll do that same uh, same trick with our 2x4 here. You just want to get it until it uh, is fully seated. And that'll finish up our look at of the line of eTrailer.com bearing kits for trailer brakes.